Hello and welcome to Skills and Automation. My name is Ash and today we're going to look at one way to find the last used row in a range of data. Specifically, we'll look at the current region property of the range object, which is synonymous with the Ctrl plus A shortcut in Excel. And on a side quest, we will look at the use range property of the worksheet object, which makes up for cases where the current region may be inadequate. Just a quick note, this slide will repeat in each of my videos on finding the last row. Since we'll follow the same format and cover the same examples in each video, just using different techniques. Please skip to the next timestamp if you prefer. So one of the most common tasks that you would come across in VBA is finding the last use row of a data range. Three common use cases for finding the last row are identify the full range of data that you may want to perform some task over, example, to loop over the data, change formatting for the data, etc. Copy and paste the range of data elsewhere. So this is a continuation of point one, but a more specific and common example would be where you want to copy the data and paste it into another worksheet or workbook. Paste new data at the bottom of the existing data range. That is, we need to find the first row with unused data below our data range and paste new data in there. We will cover each of these three examples in this video. I just want to mention that there are many ways of performing the same activities presented in this video. For this video though, we will not spend much time discussing alternatives. This video is designed to deep dive into just the technique of finding the last use row using the current region and use range properties. I have separate videos that discuss each alternative method and one video that briefly discusses all methods together and suggests which one to use and when. Please do check those out as well. For a data set, the current region is the entire range of data that is joined by continuous rows and continuous columns. Looking outside in, the current region is the entire range of data that is bound by blank rows and blank columns. So if there is a blank row or a blank column in the data set, then it will not be included in the current region. Most structured data will feature continuous rows. The data itself may not have continuous columns, but if the data has headers, then we can use it to include all the columns in the current region. In Excel, to find the current region, put your cursor in any cell within the range of data and press Ctrl A. This will select the current region for that range of data. And we can mimic the same behavior through VBA as well using the current region property of the range object. But there is an obvious flaw in the current region technique. If there is a blank row or a blank column within the data set, the rest of the data will not get picked up. So let's press Ctrl A again and see what gets selected. So what do we do here? Luckily, we have the option of using Use Range. The keyboard shortcut is Ctrl Shift End to select the entire range or Ctrl End to select the last cell. So just to note out here, if the row or column has something in it, then it will be included in the Use Range. You can use this when you're not confident that your data is continuous. An example of a scenario where you can expect empty rows is when we have to work on an Excel file or report that's been manually filled by a user. But one thing to note while using use range is what constitutes something. If a cell doesn't have any value, but it has a formatting or formula in it, then that row will get picked up. Let's just change the color of the cell to yellow and hit Ctrl Shift End again. So the entire range, including this cell gets picked up. Depending on what outcome you're after, that may or may not be what you want. If you're just after values, the best way to get the last cell would be using the find method, which is the most effective way, but the code for that is a bit long-winded. The suggestion I'll make on this topic is know your data. If you are confident about your data setup, then go ahead and use specific techniques such as current region and range.end. Both are simple and effective. It's what I use in all my videos as well. And if you're not confident that your data set will be continuous, that is, you're not sure whether there will be blanks or extra formulas or extra formatting, then use use range or find. Before we begin coding, I just want to mention that throughout this video, I will refer to the worksheet using the worksheet code name. So instead of going this workbook sheets and the worksheet name, we can simply use the worksheet code name and the code name can be found right here in properties. There are many benefits to this, but we won't get into it now. Okay, moving on. As I'd mentioned in the previous session, if you have worked in Excel, then the way to identify the current region of a range of data is to click anywhere inside the data and hit Ctrl A. Let's try this in VBA. 
First, we will declare a variable to hold the value of the last row number. We can refer to any cell within the range, but I would normally start with the top left most cell, which is A1. Press start. We need to select the current region property. Now that we can access the current region, let's select it first to check whether we are grabbing the entire range. Let's run this and see if the entire range is being selected. Yes, it is. So we are on the right track. Now let's try and find the last row. One way to do that is count the number of rows in the current region. Just rows and count and we'll print the results in the image at window. Okay, let's run this and see what we get. Get 12 and our data is on the 12th row, which is correct. So this is the correct result. If your data, including the header, starts from row one, then you're fine to use just this method. It's short, easy to read and makes sense. But let's understand what this result exactly means. We are getting the number of rows within the current region. Since our data starts in row one, the number of rows within the current region will equal to the total rows used by the data in our worksheet. Let's try and make sense of this with an example. Suppose our data starts in row two. Let's run the same code again. This time, however, the first cell in our data is A2. So we need to update our range object accordingly. Let's print this out. Now our data extends up until row 13. So immediately we see the issue. This 12 is not the last row anymore. Sure, it's the total number of rows in our data set, but that's not the same as the row number of the last row in our worksheet. To get around this, we need to grab the row number of the last row in our data using its row index. So let's just copy this code, park it below here for now, come back to our main code. Here we'll provide the index number of the last row of data in our current region and grab the worksheet row number of that row. The index can be found using the exact same code that we've been following up until now. So we'll copy this and put it here and grab the worksheet row number of this row. Let's run this and see what we get. Great, we get 13 this time, which is the correct answer. I can only guess what you're thinking. The complexity of this formula went south very fast. We could simplify this a bit. Let's put the current region into a range object. And now we can replace this part of our code with the new range variable. Let's print this out. We get 13, which is the right answer. But more importantly, this code now looks a bit more neater. For the purpose of this video though, we will keep things simple and use our first formula to go through the examples. Now we can use the cells object instead of the range object to get the exact same result. Using cells instead of range is a good option if you want to make your code more dynamic. Choose cells. So we still want cell A1, which is in the first row and first column. And the rest of it is same. Let's print this out. We get 13. That's correct. And one last thing to mention before we move to the examples. If you're just working on our active sheet, we don't need to mention the worksheet, which will make our code even shorter. So let's activate our sheet. If you're using the sheet already, then you don't need to activate it explicitly. And now that we have activated the sheet, we can just remove the reference to the worksheet. Okay, let's print this out. 13, correct answer. But out of habit, I always mention the worksheet. Okay, moving on to the examples. So we are back to our original data set. What we are going to do is loop over every row of data in this data set and place the word invoice in every corresponding row as we move through the loop. Okay, let's move on to our code. First, let's find the last row of our data range. Pretty much the same thing what we've been doing up until now. To iterate over a range, we need a counter or an iteration variable. Let's write our loop. We will ignore the headers and loop over the data which starts from row two. And the loop will extend up until the last row which we have found two lines above. And for every row, we're gonna place the word invoice in the corresponding cell in column K. Let's run this. Great, that works. So is there another way to loop over the current region without actually finding the last row? Sure there is. We can loop over each row in the current region using the for each loop. But the loop shown here is much easier to comprehend and would serve our purpose just fine. Okay, moving on to the next example. What you're going to do now is copy over our entire range of data and paste it into a new worksheet. First, we'll clear the contents of the destination worksheet. 
let's grab the last row of the range that we want to copy. Identify the range of data that we want to copy over. So our data starts from cell A1, extends up until column J, and right down until the last row, which is represented by the L row variable. And this is our range, and let's copy this. And at the first cell of the destination that we want to copy the data over to. And just as a last bit, let's auto resize the destination columns. Okay, let's run this code. So this is our original data, and this is the worksheet that we want to copy it over to. And we can see that our entire range of data has been pasted out here. But we need to ask the same question that we asked ourselves in the last example. Is there another way to do the same copy method without actually finding the last row? Yes, there is. And it's actually better. We can just copy the current region directly. So we don't need this. And let's remove this as well. So we just go identify the current region of our original data range. And basically copy it. Let's run this. That works well as well. I would recommend using current region dot copy if you want to copy the entire data range. If you want to copy over specific columns, then you can use the current region dot rows dot count technique. Okay, moving on. Here we will identify the first unused row after our range of data and paste in new data here. We're going to paste in data from the copy from worksheet. Okay. Let's check how to do it using VBA. Let's get the last row of our original data range. So this will give us the last use row, which is this row. What we want is the next row because that is the first unused row after our data range. So what you can do is just add one to this. Let's copy the data over. As mentioned in the previous section, we can just copy over the range directly. Our data is in sheet copy from. We can fill the current region into a range variable. But this will include the headers as well. So this would give us this entire range. If you don't want to copy the header over, then we will need to resize this range to exclude the header. I won't get into this resizing method. It would need another video, but here's the code for it. And finally, we'll copy over the data. So we'll copy this range and paste it onto our invoice worksheet, starting from column A and in the row that we found right up here, which is our first unused row. Okay, let's run this code. Great, we can see our two new lines of data out here. So that works well, moving on. Before we wrap up, let's look at the scenario where the data is not continuous. That is, there are blank rows or columns in between our data set. In this case, the current region will not work properly. Let's look at an example. There is a blank row right here in our data. Let's try and find the last row using just current region. So this is the code that we've been using up until now. Let's run this. It gives us nine, but our data extends to row 13. So we're just given the value of the row up here and these rows are being ignored. To get around this, we need to use use range. Just note here, unlike the current region, which is a property of the range object, use range is a property of the worksheet object. So we'll refer to our worksheet, choose use range, and the rest of the code is pretty similar. We will just count the number of rows in our use range. Let's run this. We get 13, which is the right answer. And similar to current region, if your data set doesn't actually start from row one, then we can't just simply count the rows. For example, if your data set is something like this, we need to return the actual worksheet row number of the last row of used data using its row index. So we'll copy this, park it below for later use. So we need to fill in the row index out here, which is nothing but the number of rows in that use range. Then grab the row. Let's run this. Gives us 14. Our current data extends to row number 14. So we're getting the right answer. One last thing. There doesn't need to be data in the cells for it to be considered use range. We could just change the font color or increase the font size or have a formula in the cell. It will still get picked up. For example, let's have a look at this data set. There are no values in these rows, but it's filled with the yellow color. Let's grab the last row. We get 20. And the data set, including the yellow colors, extends till row 20, so we're getting the right answer. But sometimes that's not what we want. Suppose we want to delete these rows in yellow. That is, delete the rows between the boundary of the current region and the boundary of the use range. This example would be a fitting end to this video presentation, as we will use last rows for both current region and use range. Here's the code for it. I won't get into the explanation. 
Just know that this code will work as long as the data begins in row one and there are no blanks in our data set. Okay, just to recap, what we're gonna do is delete all these rows off. First, we'll find the last row of our current region, offset it by one. Then we'll find the last row of our use range. And then we'll loop backwards from the last row of our use range to the first unused row. And as we progress along the loop, we will delete each row as long as there is no data in it. Let's run this. Yay, that worked. But a better and more thorough option is using the count a function, which counts the number of blank cells in a row. If you want to delete blank rows, this is the code that I will recommend. So we are back to our first data set with a yellow rows. What we will do is add a couple of more blank rows out here. So our code will start from row 24, delete all the yellow rows and delete all these blank rows as well. Great, that works well. So that's it for the coding bit. Let's move on to the wrap up session. And that's it for finding the last row using the current region and use range properties. You can easily search for the last column using the same technique. This may not be the most efficient of all the available methods to find the last row, especially so if there is a chance that your data set is not continuous. In that case, I will recommend the find method. But here's my take. If you know your data set well, then by all means use current region or even the range.end technique. And as mentioned earlier, there are other ways to find the last row. I have separate videos on those as well as a video combining and comparing different techniques. Please check those out as well. So which method do you prefer and why? Please let me know in the comments below. And if you found this video useful, please like and subscribe. Thanks and see you in the next one.